Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is the review and approval of the minutes from the May 19th, 2023 Board of Health meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the meeting minutes? Yes. Okay, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Dr. Abraham? Aye. Jenny Fisherman? Aye. Myself? Aye. The meeting minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is to review and act on posting a permanent health advisory at Dean Park Pond. And I believe we have uh, Kevin Esposito here from Parks and Rec to speak to this request. You can come right up here and hear you. Uh, so we do, have a, we do have a regular testing schedule uh, that we go by for different water bodies in town. Uh, Dean Park is uh, heavily susceptible uh, to high bacteria. So we are looking to post a sign basically stating that. Uh, we do wish to continue testing uh, for our own database. Uh, and uh, rather than this running back and forth, putting signs up, taking signs down, we think it's better to have the actual uh, year-round warning over there. So there is a, uh, there is a uh, copy of the sign in, the, uh, in your packet, I believe. Okay. Yes. So there aren't any concerns about eating fish from the pond? Well, we're going by uh, the state guidelines, and that's what they put out is uh, uh, that the problem is, is there. It's, it's not always there, but it, Dean, it's, the, it's mostly there. So uh, I, th I think this I think the, the signage is is what we need. Uh, I mean, I can't I can't speak to to you know the condition of the of the fish right now and stuff like that. But uh, overall, I think the warning is is what we need. So, did the at times when we, you you're putting them on and taking them off and putting them on, did it include this uh, fish related item before? Uh, we usually just put the, uh, the, uh, the warning for a period of time uh, until it tests again, uh, until the tests come back better. Uh, our advisory that we usually put is avoid contact with the water and uh, don't let your pets in the water or drink it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where we usually, what we usually do. I have two other places that are posted like that right now. Last year, we never got to take the signs down at Dean. It was, it was constant all summer that we had to do that. Uh, other, bodies, other, other bodies of water in town test okay. Uh, we had a lot of good samples this week. We had a few bad ones. Uh, but Dean Park is, is um, the problem spot. Okay. Uh, Mr. You, Chair, to ahead. clarify, did uh, from what you had mentioned, I got the impression that you are testing on a periodic basis, but not frequently enough. Uh, but this signage we test, we test weekly. You do. Okay. The signage says it's no longer being tested. So is that a disconnect? Well, we were. We've been. <laughs> we've been back. This is uh, uh, Aliyah. She's been doing the testing for us from uh, the engineering department. Okay. So I think I'll, I'll let her address that. That's okay. We've been back and forth on different sites to to continue testing, um, especially you know if we're if we're seeing so many high results so frequently at Dean Park, um, I think it might be a talking point in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a point in the future that we we have a bigger discussion about what we're continuing to test and why. Um, Probably right now we'll just continue testing, um, at, but have the the statement that you know we cannot, I guess, ensure that we we have tested the water. We're just assuming high bacteria at all times. Okay. 
So I, I'm just concerned that on one side we are testing, but yet we are saying on the side we are not testing. So does it make more sense to say <coughs> that our testing frequency doesn't guarantee or ensure that the water is safe? So the, that's the rest of the sign makes absolute sense. But I just worry about uh, the disconnect between what we say and what we do, which might sort of make the public feel that we're misleading them in terms of what we're actually doing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we, can, we are justified in saying we don't uh, test on a frequent enough basis to ensure safety of the public, which is fair. And so, therefore, the rest of the sign makes sense, which is still avoid getting into the water. I also feel that if we're saying that it's okay to eat the fish, but we're not testing the water, <laughs> that's a little bit of a disconnect, too. True. You know? That's because of um, the state, right? That's what we were told by the state. These are the state guidelines. We work with Mass DPH on this. Does that make it right, though? <laughs> That's what they say. I mean, I, mean I, I think if we're telling them that they can eat the food, but we're not testing it. I said the same thing, but well, uh, I don't think you can not, take, not have them fish. Well, to carry point, when we met with... Uh, the Mass Department of Public Health, that was their recommendation to us. And so, uh, but I agree with uh, Dr. Ibrahim in terms of being, having a, a very consistent message in terms of testing. That's all we have, one of our tools we can use. And we leave it up to uh, whoever want to use that body of water to decide that. So is the suggestion to just take out this statement? And or to, um, to modify the statement, I think, to be consistent with our practice, yep. uh, just so that it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, as, as mentioned, what we're doing and what we're saying is sort of consistent, that's all. Okay. The rest of the sign I think is fine. Okay. Okay. You guys comfortable with just removing that statement? Okay. Or you can sure. even amend the verbiage to your, yeah. your choice. Yeah, then if they see me out there, they're not like, you said you weren't testing this, what is going on? Right. It, Correct. It makes but it more consistent, yeah. Okay, so if there are no other further uh, comments or questions, do I have a motion to approve posting a permanent public health advisory at Dean Park Pond with the um, change of the, the, the testing element on the sign? Yes, motion. I'll second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye, Dr. Abraham. Aye. Jenny Fishman? Aye. Myself, aye. Okay, so that uh, the, the motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is to review and act on a memo of understanding for Walnut Condo Association for automatic water testing versus having a certified pool operator test four times daily. And we have somebody from... Uh, from Wellington Properties here to speak to this. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> so we are seeking approval, as you stated, for um, automated pool equipment at uh, Walnut Hill. We have the same memorandum of understanding on file with the town for another pool that we operate at uh, Harrington Farms from 2015, which I believe is basically the same as the one that you have in your packet. Um, we'd be installing automated pool equipment, uh, which auto feeds chlorine and chemicals as needed um, with the understanding that we would continue to have a certified pool operator twice a week to maintain the controller, provide verification of test results and make adjustments to the water chemistry as needed. Okay. Uh, are there any comments or questions from the board? Mr. Chair, one question. And sure. uh, our chair is the expert in engineering, but the automated testing and cleaning is comparable to a manual testing in terms of uh, efficacy and yes. safety and so on. Yep. Yeah, it looks to me like there there is definitely sufficient um, verification that the automated tester system is, is working properly in terms of the audits mm -hmm. and the... Um, Certified pool operator testing twice a week. So it seems to me that it's a good check on the automated system. Plus, it's been going on for several years now at, mm. you said, Harrington Farms? 
Yes, Harrington Farms has and been And there's been in no place. issue with, with that at Harrington Farms? Nope, we've had that in place since April 15th of 2015. Okay. So you said somebody would be coming twice a week. I'm seeing item number three saying once every 24 hours the controlling equipment would be audited. So the, yeah, number number four is that we will provide the a certified pool operator uh, twice a week. Number two is that that pool operator will basically give a training, a rundown of the equipment uh, to the board of trustees who will manually test the water um, the five days per week that the pool operator isn't present. So who would be the individual, individual coming auditing every 24 hours? So every 24 hours, it would be a member of the Board of Trustees okay. um, for the, the property. All right. Okay, any other comments or questions? Motion to approve. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Dr. Abraham? Aye. Benny Fishman? Aye. Myself, aye. The, uh, the motion is approved, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Justin, just to button that up, after the meeting concludes, I will send you the letter confirming the board's vote. Okay. So you have that in writing, just like we did for Harrington. Excellent. Okay. And I will let you know once we have the install done. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next item on our agenda is to review and discuss coronavirus COVID-19 update. Yes, good morning, so Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, I will ask my colleague, uh, Ms. Amelia Halton, senior public health nurse in the division to give an update. So hello everyone, good morning. Um, at this point, we have very few reported cases through the state. Um, virtually nothing to speak of. People are testing at home, as you know, and those results don't get reported on a regular basis. We haven't had any outbreaks in the area. Um, communicable disease-wise, an occasional foodborne illness, but nothing much to speak of. Um, I'm at the point where we're pretty low on COVID vaccine. I have one more clinic scheduled uh, within our jurisdiction, and at that point, we won't be ordering anymore since the lots we have expire in August anyway. And so we wait for the new lots to come out in the fall. And then we'll start looking at where to have clinics again. So it's kind of quiet right now. Okay. okay. Is there potentially a, a new uh, vaccine that may be in development for other new strains? That's the buzzword. Okay. Th that's what we're expecting for the fall. Okay. And then we're expecting it to be an annual uh, booster, like the flu shot. Okay. So more later. It will have more information in the next couple of months. Okay. Okay. Dr. Abraham, do you have any f comments? So uh, as Amelia pointed out, there is no formal statistics, even wastewater surveillance is not occurring on a regular basis now, at least not being reported out. But uh, obviously we see a fair degree of sporadic cases, especially people self-testing and uh, turning positive and being treated for the same, et cetera. So that's still, there is still disease in the community. And so the same precautions as we has been in place for long still continues. There is a new variant, so the XBB lineage is the current lineage of the Omicron strain, which has been prevalent. It's about 97.6% in the country. And so there's a new variant called the EU.1.1, .1, which is the newest variant, just hit the U.S. shows about 1.7%, primarily in the northwestern region of the country, so the Washington State, Montana, etc. 
there's about 20 different variants that the CDC is monitoring, not knowing which of these variants wa might become the dominant strain, so they're monitoring, but there is a mandate from the FDA to both vaccine manufacturers, Pfizer and Moderna, to basically focus their next version of the vaccine, which is expected this fall, to be only on the XBB, the Omicron, because that's presumed to be the, will be the prevalent uh, generic series of uh, virus that will be circulating. And so the vaccine should target that. There was attempts to try to combine uh, a flu and COVID vaccine this year, and unfortunately trials showed the dampening of the efficacy of the COVID vaccine. And so they have decided to go their separate ways for this year, which is flu separate and COVID separate, but going next year, given that this might become an annual phenomenon to essentially try to make a combined vaccine so as to increase compliance, essentially allow people to get a two-in-one shot rather than two separate vaccines. Okay, great, thank you. Jenny, any comments? Or no. Okay, given the, the very low occurrence of COVID-19, I just wanted to ask the board if there, were, if there was any interest in rescinding the mask advisory that he put in place last May. So my only concern would be, I think we're still seeing cases. It's not reported up because there are the official reporting channels because of the overall prevalence being low are not required. But I think those of us who treat continue to see some spur acti activities. So the advisory is an advisory, and I think common sense still prevails. <coughs> so I wouldn't be averse to leaving the advisory in place and recognizing that it's no mandate to people to use a max, uh, mask. But the removal of an advisory sort of may give an impression that everything is completely well, the disease is abated, while it is sort of probably lying below the radar, so to speak. I'm in agreement. Okay, so that's your recommendation. So it, there's, there's no harm in, in keeping it in place, even if people are not well aware of it these days because of a low occurrence. So there's, there's no harm, we can just leave it as is. Precisely. I think it also, for those that do want to wear a mask, feel for yep. whether, um, for health reasons or otherwise, it normalizes it for them. Completely okay. agree. It's comforting, it gives them permission to wear a mask without explaining exactly. why am I wearing a mask. They don't have to justify yeah. it. No, I think it's a good thing to okay. keep in place. Sure, that sounds Agreed. good. Agreed. Right. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to review and discuss updates from the Central Mass Regional Public Health Alliance. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, in your packet is an update from Mecca. Uh, it's in uh, his environmental health uh, inspection from May 19 to current. Um, okay. And also, I want to give an update in terms of um, the city of Worcester submitted a five years IMA to town manager Kevin for review and approval as well. Okay. Are there any comments or questions from the board in regard to the um, this, the Alliance update? No. Okay. okay, great. Thank you so all. You're welcome. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is to review the meeting schedule, so I will leave this up to my <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> well, I certainly would like to thank you for serving on the board for nine out of the 12 years that I've been here. Um, you've shown great leadership skills. You certainly helped um, be very instrumental through the whole pandemic and every other plague that seems to come through the Board of Health. So um, very good moderator when we've had some testy <laughs> <laughs> attendees in our meetings that always keep you cool. And um, I think that you've been a fabulous addition to the town of Shrewsbury. You're also a meeting member. Yes. And uh, hope that you stay in touch. And thank you very much. <laughs> Well, thank you, but you, if you guys want to touch on your meeting schedule, but then, then we can continue. July 21st or 28th work for you? I could do either. I think that either one of those sounds like they would work. Do you have a preference of one over the other? I'm open to either. Mm, let's do July 21st. Fine. Okay, uh, Carrie has already touched on the, the next meeting agenda item and that is I'm, I'm 
ending my term as serving on the Board of Health, and I want to thank my colleagues for all of their help and cooperation and just getting through some very difficult times. Dr. Abraham's expertise during the pandemic was mm -hmm. invaluable. It showed, gave, gave us a lot of wisdom and, um, you know, certainly great directions to go into. And, of course, Carrie, who is really the uh, heart <laughs> and soul of the health department, <laughs> made my job very much easier. She really stays on top of things, a great professional. Thank you, Solo, for all of your help. And um, also, I want to mention, you know, the, the, f the previous um, director, Karen Clark, she was a, you yes. know, a tremendous help mm -hmm. to the board and to me personally, mm -hmm. as well as um, Phil Legere, who was the, what was he, the in environmental health Yeah, he was lead. the environmental mm -hmm. health director, but also he's uh, the Title V. Uh, he's mm. he's still helping out at yes. this point in time with mm. Title V. <laughs> Title V, yes. Phil was, he provided a lot of, you know, expertise and knowledge, and he, he really helped us out. So I really appreciate Phil and mm -hmm. Aaron and just everyone who has been a great help to me. And I also want to thank Dr. Hirsch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has helped me tremendously and the board in regard to the um, all the health issues and other related issues mm -hmm. that he, he helped me out with. So I thank you, Dr. Hirsch, as well, the medical director of the Alliance. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'd like to pick up also and say thank you for your leadership. Uh, as, as Kerry said, I think the board is always tasked with sometimes difficult decisions, and sometimes not everybody agrees with the decision made. But uh, I think equanimity, which is just maintaining that calm and being able to allow people to be heard and people feel that they've been heard, and then yet guiding the board to the right decision is a unique uh, ability and talent. So I'm particularly grateful for your leadership. Uh, you've been a wonderful role model for all of us to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, it's been very nice serving alongside you over the past several years. I can't even remember how many years I've been on the board now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, six or? I think no. so. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. But thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I echo everyone's sentiment in this room this morning. Been coming, I've been here for f five and a half half months now. <laughs> it's been a joy uh, working with you. Uh, your calmness, your demeanor, your leadership has been great. So, on behalf of the staff and the Alliance community, we just want to say thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Sola. Okay, so with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. All in favor, signify by saying aye, Dr. Abraham. Aye. Jenny Fishman. Aye. Myself, aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>